So this is the turn and reveal mechanism die set. So you can make any size card with this. So I've gone ahead and cut this one already. Now I'm cutting it in acetate just so that the witch looks like she is really flying, but you can use cardstock as well if you want. If you're using cardstock, I recommend that you could die cut two and stick them together with some construction glue and then it'd be nice and strong. And I've gone ahead and cut the little arrow there as well. And I've just stuck that on there, although I'm thinking it is she is going to come up the way that I've put the arrow. Otherwise, you just flip the arrow. I prepped this beforehand, but it may well change. Then you get this little die here. And that's going to be like your brad. So rather than having the bulk of a brad, I've given you this die instead. So I'm going to get that one cut because I haven't cut that one yet. OK, and when this one cuts, it will... You'll see there you get these little slots and you just want to fold them down like that. OK, so just fold it down like so. That is going to go through this piece here. OK, so it's going to go through that centre hole. Make sure it's all lined up and then just fold them back out like that. You're going to add glue to these little tabs to stick it to one side and then glue to this section to stick it to the other. And that, you'll see, acts as your rivet and that will allow the mechanism to work, but with less bulk. So you want to prepare that whether you've got the cardstock or acetate like myself. So this is all going to go on a six by six card. But like I said, any size that you want. Bigger ones, you can get larger stamped images, die cuts hidden in because you'll have more of an area so if you've got a larger i guess image then a smaller card may not work so you want to make sure if you're doing it on a six by six or five by seven or even smaller that your images are small ones so that's why i wanted it to work with my back catalog as well and other stamps that you might already have in your stash so what I've got here is I've cut myself two pieces of five and three quarters squared. And this one here, I've just inked this kind of like, I thought it was maybe like inside the witch's cauldron. It's like the night sky. And I thought it looked quite good as the background there. So to create that, I just used Twisted Citroen, Mowed Lawn, Hickory Smoke and Black Soot, which are the distressed oxides. So just a really quick background. And then with this one here, I want to cut this grass effect so with this release you get these four edges now I wanted them to not just be Halloween style so the grass will work for all seasons cut it in green brilliant if you want more of a silhouette cut it in the black the trees yes in black they do look like dead trees but if you cut that in brown and then you can add some little leaves onto them or you can add little flowers and then you've got something that's going to work again all round and then these ones here look great as winter scenes so if you die cut them in white they look great with maybe father christmas flying over the top or if you die cut them in black and pop a yellow behind them so it's like the lights and it looks like more of a halloween spooky kind of house so just wanted something that was going to be a bit more versatile so we've got this edge here and then also we need the main the main one here. So this one is going to allow this piece to work. Now this can go anywhere you want. So if you want it to go along the bottom, on the side, on the top, maybe you've got something that's going to come and hang down. It looks great if you're going to use the... The jungle animals that i launched the swing collection if you've got like the ape or the orangutan he can kind of come down or the, or the snake any any of those will work looks really nice but i'm going to have this one so that it's along the bottom but i'm going to come slightly more to the right hand side so there's a cut line on the bottom and a cut line this semicircle i've done it this length so again it will work on eight inches so if you're doing slimline cards then it's going to work on that as well but you can have it in the middle but if you want to hide something more like into this space and just shift it across. So I'm using that bottom cut line to butt up against the cardstock. So I know I've got it nice and straight. I'm coming in there about half an inch, okay? And then I'm just going to just tack that just there. And I'm gonna run that through my machine. So this is gonna go through a standard machine. If you're working on your five by seven or six by six cards, it's gonna go through a standard machine because this, even though the die is long, it's very, very thin. If you're cutting maybe a piece of seven by seven, eight by eight, things like that, then you'd need a larger die cutting machine because it's a larger card that you're cutting into. But most people are going to be making these kind of sizes. So just bring in my die machine here. So I'm just going to place that on top there. 
And then if I take this one, what will happen is that's going to go inside like this. And then when you move it left to right, this will do its thing and allow whatever it is you've got popping up. But before we do that, I then want to cut my border. So I need my witch to be able to hide behind here. So I'm going to have to come up a little bit higher there. I think it's going to be, that's going to be stuck down I'll just kind of position that she's going to be kind of there so yeah I think we want to go about there and then I can just pretend when that pops up and then she's going to be yeah kind of like this I think that's going to work so I'm going to just lay that one down again they're nice and long and they only cut from the top so you can cut into anything pop that down i'm just going to run that through my machine so now if i take this away and the good thing about this as well is it will the the waste is worth keeping as well because if you just flip that around you've now got you know that grass effect again so i've got this so i just want to now place this over the top and just check that i'm kind of happy with how this is all looking. I mean, she may well be a little bit lower, more just coming out of the grass. She may come out of the card. Now I might even add the acetate to this because when you've got a point like this, obviously when something's coming back down again, that's got lots of edges, it could well catch. So by adding the acetate behind this piece and then on top, you, you just stop that happening. However, if you've got something that's just a flat edge or top part, for example, like this one I've got here, where you see I've just cut the two in half and just placed one on the back and one forward. Nothing's going to catch on that, so you don't need to add the acetate. So it will vary depending on the borders that you use, and obviously not everybody's going to use those borders. So I've cut this piece of acetate here to three and a half by five and three quarters. Along the three and a half side, you want to score at half an inch. Like I said, this is optional, but it, it does add a nice effect, and I'll show you an example. And that's this one here. So everything is encapsulated within the acetate, all of the mechanism piece. But because these trees are obviously quite delicate, it would be easy for the bats to kind of catch. But I think the acetate just adds something a bit special. So I'm just cleaning this with a bit of rubbing alcohol. You can use surgical spirit. You can use your hand gel. Anything that's got an alcohol in it will bring up your acetate nice and it'll get rid of any sticky marks so where you scored i'm just going to fold that in half i'm just going to run some tape just thin tape just along the bottom edge here like so and then just take that away and i'm just going to clip this this is just to line everything up just clip it over the top of your piece of card Okay, and then I'm going to take this one and line it up with the bottom, like so. So, I mean, the, the length of this three and a half piece will vary for everyone, depending on how big you've made this piece. There we go. So now that's all stuck. So it means that this piece is all going to be hidden underneath, like so. Grass is on the top, so the witch is going to move in there nicely now. She's got nothing to catch on. And then I can add other things and build up other things on here. Now, I do think I want to stamp some bats, I think, here. My sentiment is going to go in this section here, so I don't need to worry about that just yet. The bats here, you get a trio of bats together, which is this stamp, and then you get these two separate ones as well. And it's from the Spooky Fun set. So let's do those ones over there. Because it's going to be displayed, well, I imagine it will be displayed with her popped up. So we have a couple of bats there and then maybe that one kind of there. Something like that. Make sure your distressed oxide is, is dry because it can absorb anything you stamp on top. I've done this about an hour ago, so it should be okay. But you might find you just have to go over it a few times. Because you can kind of stamp it, walk away and then come back and it'd be 
more dull and if it's a black it might look a bit more like a, a grey but I think that's going to be okay I'm happy with that okay so while the bats are still drying a little bit we want to get this in place so you want to what's going to happen I'll show you first before I do it it's always best I think to stick it in with this down the bottom first and have it just so it's pulled away from the circle a little bit or that semicircle a little bit if I just bring it up there can you see and then you'll be able to just stick that down there so first of all take it out add your glue onto this side here only keep it on the cardstock not the acetate piece or that you know this tab piece just on that green piece there so i'm just going to pop it under so i'm keeping this lifted up and i've kind of got my hand pushing that away just so i can just get this piece in place so once i've kind of got it kind of in the middle like so and just push that down on the back there and just check at this point that that can move you can see there it's moving quite freely because if that doesn't move, then you need to go back again. You might have to peel it off, cut another one and then go again. But make sure that moves nice and smoothly. And now we can play around and practice positioning the, in my case, the witch. Everybody's is going to be different. But I want to make sure that she is going to be able to hide behind the grass. Because I had it just, you can see that I'm going to have to bring her just down there. So what I'm going to do is, again, use some tape double-sided tape just a little bit and let's just pop that in fact I kind of know where I want her to go but I would just pop a little bit of tape just on the end of this first just so you can kind of position you might you know put whatever it is on there and then find that it's too coming up too high or it's too low you want to be able to just pull it off easily but I think I had her pretty much where I wanted it to be now another thing as well don't worry if a little bit does stick up here like that for example because you can build on top of that area here you could put the haunted house for example I've got one free here so I could have and because the grass the top of the grass isn't stuck down you know I could squeeze that haunted house in there I mean, it's going to poke out the top but then that means that the witch you know she wouldn't have to go all the way down here she could actually just kind of be like there and then she would just pop up so don't worry if something sticks out I mean I've got little tombstones here so I could build up some tombstones there there's all sorts I can do so I'm going to because I want to make sure that she comes up nicely here so I think that's going to stick her down enough there so let's just pop that down yeah so she might just come out the top there so i'm going to just pull her down so i didn't push down on that tape so i'm going to just bring her down just a little bit and make sure there's nothing sticky on her i can feel a little bit so i'm just going to use my anti-static there just to take that off okay so now yeah she will pretty much disappear a little bit there but like I said that's fine I can I mean she can go all the way over there but we can add a stopper here if you don't want it to go that far okay so next we want to add some tape along this piece here so just along that tab like so and then we need to add little glue on these tiny little tabs but before we do that you want to add some foam tape on here now I've got the little black foam squares here now you want to add your foam anywhere where the witch isn't going to touch it so or it's not going to stop her from popping up so I'm going to have one there because she doesn't come anywhere over that side and then basically all of that needs clearance but I can put foam here so I'm going to add some there in the corner, there, right there. Like so. And just check that that is all going to work. Now, I don't really want her going over the edge there. So, so let's say about there. So I'm going to cut a little bit of foam and just pop it towards the top there and then just make sure that this can still come around yeah that's not gonna that would probably come down a little bit let's say there there we go 
So that's perfect. So it means she can go all that way and then she'll stop and won't go any further. But you need to have this clearance here. But again, I could put some foam there as well. It's going to be different every card you do. You're going to have something different in there. But don't stick anything where that has to go. That needs to be able to move. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is add liquid glue on these pieces. But before you do that, I'd take all the backing off of everything else. Now I'm going to add a little bit of glue just to tack it in place. It's not going to go anywhere now anyway. But just see there, I've just added some glue. And I'm going to take this one. And first of all, I'm going to, on an angle, just line it up with that fold there. If I do it this way, it's a little bit easier for me. Fold that back over. There we go, like so. And then I can just basically roll everything else down and just make sure that piece sticks and just give it a burnish along the top here. There we go. So now, I'll just lift that all up. There we go. So now, you'll see she goes pretty much where I need her to be. Like I said, I'm going to add, I think some of these tombstones will look quite good coming out of the grass there, but I want to make sure that she's going to be about there. Yeah, I think this looks cool. So now I'm going to stamp my sentiment and I've got a load of pumpkins here as well. But I'm not sure. Mm, I don't think I want pumpkins on this one. I think I'm going to go for the, the tombstone instead. So that's the card all finished. So I ended up adding the Witch's Cauldron because I thought it worked perfectly with the sentiment. So I just heat embossed the sentiment and then just cut that out and popped it up on some foam in the middle. And I've also decided to go with the pumpkins. The tombstones, gravestones just didn't quite work. I think it was just too much grey. I wanted more colour. So I've gone for the couple of the little pumpkins there and one with the face. And then also, I don't know if you saw it or not, if I edited it out, but I just cut an arrow in white because the black was lost against this. I think initially I had it against a green background on a different card that I was going to make. So you can see she slides nicely there and she hides just behind those pumpkins and that will fit now into a six by six envelope. Really like this one. I've used my accent glaze as well. This one here, just over the witch's potion there the handle and also just on the eyes there on the pumpkin but that's just one way of using these dies like I said there's so many different ways I will show an even simplified version where it's just without the edges and it's just straight like the sample that I briefly shared so that one will be coming or it might have come before this one I'm not sure but uh yeah hopefully that's given you lots of inspiration use it with any dies any theme it will work with so much and I hope you enjoy it everything will be linked that I've used in the description box below and I'll be back again soon take care bye